year four and welcome to today's assembly which is all about Nelson Mandela. Now before I start reading you a little bit of a story about Nelson Mandela's life I'd like you to have a little think about if you've ever heard of Nelson Mandela and what you know about him. So what have you heard about him? I'll give you a couple of minutes to think. Okay, I'm going to read to you a little bit of a story about Nelson Mandela's life and why he um, is so important when it comes to the term freedom. So, this story is called A Desire to Serve the People and it describes the childhood of Nelson Mandela who was the leader of South Africa's anti-apartheid movement and he was the country's president in 1994, so not long before I was born. So. When a son was born to Chief Henry Gadler Mandela and his wife Nokfani, on the 8th of July 1918, they gave him the Iqshosa name of Rolihala, and it was because it was to f the fashion to have a European name, a heroic one. They also called him Nelson. The boy and his three sisters lived in the family kraal of whitewashed huts, not far from Umtutta in the Transkei. Although the Mandelas were members of the royal family of the Thembu people, Nelson, like many African children, herded sheep and cattle and helped them with the ploughing. As a young boy, he was very tall for his age and he was a fast runner. He hunted buck and, when hungry, stole mealy cobs from the maize fields. He loved the countryside with its grassy rolling hills and the stream which flowed eastward to the Indian Ocean. At night, under Africa's brilliant stars, everyone used to gather around a big open fire to listen to the elders of the tribe. The boy was fascinated by the tales told by these bearded old men, tales about the good old days before the coming of the white man, and the tales about the brave acts which performed by their ancestors in defending their country against the European invaders. Those tales, said Mandela, many years later when he was on trial for his life, stirred in him a desire to serve and protect the people in their struggle to be free. A, di a desire which, which eventually led to the him becoming the most famous political prisoner of our time. A prisoner with songs written about him and streets named after him. How appropriate that Nelson Mandela's chosen name, Rohilala, means stirring up trouble. When Nelson first went to school, a school for African children, it was a shock to find the history books described only white heroes and referred to his people as savages and cattle thieves. All the same, he was eager for Western education and proud that his great-grandfather had given land on which to build a mission school. Even when fellow pupils teased him about his clothes, cast off from his father, he pretended that he didn't mind. At home, he picked up information not taught at school about how Dutch and British settlers with guns had fought and defeated black people with spears and taken most of their land. Then how the British, after defeating the Dutch in the Boer War, Boer was the D Dutch word for farmer, had sh shared power with their former enemy. Despite passionate protests from Africans and liberal whites, the British government gave m the million white Saf South Africans over the four and a half million non-white Africans, Asians and those of mixed race known as coloured people, the Boers calling themselves Afrikaners, had become an important part of the all-white parliament which passed more and more colour bar laws. They aimed at keeping Africans, the native people, as labourers and servants who were not allowed to move freely in their own country and were forced to live in reserves or locations such as inhuman policies could only be ma maintained by force and from the earliest childhood Nelson heard names such as Bullhawk and Bondleswartz, names which recalled the massacre of hundreds of Africans. In 1930 Henry Mandela fell seriously ill. Realising that he was dying he presented his son to the paramount chief. He asked that the boy be given a good education so Nelson became the ward of David Dandelyabo and lived in the modest hut at the chief's great palace. Fitted with new clothes, he went to a Methodist boarding school. He continued to respect his people's customs, even when he went on to study for a Bachelor of the Arts degree at Fort Hare, a college for Africans in the Eastern Cape. 
Although he was not clever, he worked hard and he was very popular. However, his studies were cut short when he was suspended for taking part in a student strike. Returning home, he was ordered by the Paramount Chief to give up the protest. He might have obeyed for an unexpected development. My guardian, he later explained, felt it was time for me to get married. He loved me very much, but he was no Democrat and did not think it worthwhile to consult me about a wife. He selected a girl, fat and dignified, and arrangements were weighed for the wedding. And by this time, Nelson had also realised that he was being groomed for chieftainship and had no wish to rule over an oppressed people, so he decided to run away. And that is where we're going to leave that story about Nelson Mandela. And if you wanted to study a bit more about him, you will probably find out more about him in your later school in life, as he was a very important historical figure, especially in Africa. I'd like you to have one think now, your little reflection, about what freedom means to you and what you are looking forward to do again once the lockdown restrictions in England start to leave, once they've gone. Have a little think. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that assembly and that story about Nelson Mandela and there is lots of information online about him if you wanted to find out more. Or you could ask me or your parents about him as well and I'm sure that we'll be able to give you lots more information about him. I hope you enjoy your lesson this afternoon and I will see you later. <laughs>